Lisa Riley, Dara O'Brien and Alan Farrell, and they wish to discuss the current conditions in St Mulligas uh, School in Balbriggan. Uh, Malaga and um, on at uh, who's, who's first up Deputy, Deputy Claire Daly Deputies have one minute each it, Yeah it's a hard act to follow to, to come back to this but the unsuitable accommodation in the school has been well flagged with the Minister and with his department you know it's kind of ironic that a few weeks ago in the aftermath of Storm Alley that the conditions had deteriorated further and it was raised in the Shannon and here we are on the eve of Storm Callum where actually the parents and pupils are wondering are they going to have a school to go into at all because 58% of that school which accommodates hundreds of students, 30 teachers uh, 6 SNAs are housed in t almost 20 year old crumbling pre fab buildings, four of which had to be evacuated in the last storm. Minister, these buildings are beyond repair. There's holes and gaps in the roof, fallen gutters, exposed electrical wires. The days when children are sitting with coats on can't uh, get warm in the winter, too hot in the summer are just beyond uh, belief. There needs to be action and the technical site visit that was made, the report is supposed to be in its final stages. We haven't been in, uh, given a clear indication of what's going to be done here. They need their new premises. Prefabs are freezing. The parents are concerned that the coming storm is actually going to do away with them altogether. Uh, and I'm not sure that that wouldn't be uh, a, a that would necessarily be a bad thing. They leak when it rains. They are impossible to heat because the electrics are overloaded. They Parents dread sending their kids into the school if they think it's going to be cold because their kids' teeth are chattering during the day. There are over 50% of the school children accommodated in prefabs that were put in as a temporary measure in 2000. I am, as I'm sure my constituency colleagues are as well, inundated with uh, requests from parents. The result of the technical review hasn't been made known to the school as yet. They are still waiting on that and they need to know. Another storm is approaching and parents are fearful about sending their children into the school at the only school that they can, that, that they can attend in Balbriggan and it is a place where the population is growing and an issue that needs to be addressed as a matter of urgency. Corporate Minister, I've visited the school on a number of occasions. We, we know the school, all our colleagues do. Since um, 2003, the department has spent 1.16 million on prefabs. We'd have a new school built. Uh, now, the school, in my view, it's unhealthy for the kids, it's unsafe. My colleagues have mentioned the technical assessments technical assessment was carried out in February and I put another parliamentary question down to you again uh, in September and it just refers to the site, a technical site visit was carried out. We know that. That happened in February. Uh, the parents and the principal Pauline Costello and her, her team there are honestly losing patience now. They're exacerbated by this. We do need to get a re resolution. This is cross party and those are none representatives from Dublin Fingo. We want a proper school facilities for the kids and the staff of St Malaga's. It needs to be fast-tracked and I hope you can give that commitment to us today that after all this time waiting, 19 years, some of the prefabs, that we can move ahead with a proper permit. Raising this issue, I, I, I can uh, understand the, the uh, con concern uh, that has raised. Indeed, it's been raised not just by, by the deputies here, but uh, by Senator James, uh, James Riley as well. Um, so there is acute concern. Um, I think the deputies are right. There, there was a, a visit to the department by the department to the uh, school in February, uh, and that was followed up then by a technical uh, site visit in April. Um, and the, that the agreement has been worked out as to the exact um, scale of what is required, uh, namely uh, 18 classroom primary school and two classroom ASD unit. Um, the work has been ongoing in doing the master planning of the site, which I understand is uh, 
complex. Uh, the purpose of the building is to project the additional accommodation as well as the replacement of the current, current temporary accommodation. The development of the project brief must have regard to the continuance of the existing schools while construction is underway. Due to the complexities of the school's existing site, issues to be considered in the development of the project brief included identifying the preferred location of the buildings having regard to the challenging site, decanting considerations and construction traffic uh, access. The project brief is expected to be completed by the end of next week, having regard to the complex technical assessment process involved. Uh, the department will be then in contact with the school in relation to the next steps. Uh, the completion of the project brief will faci facilitate progression of the project into architectural planning, uh, which includes the appointment of a design team. Uh, so it is uh, in a position to move forward. The project brief will be completed at the end of next week and it will then move into the architectural um, planning phase. I am uh, acutely aware that uh, the school suffered damage to three of the old stock prefabs uh, due to adverse uh, weather conditions. Uh, repair works uh, were being carried out on those. Uh, in addition, my department, as you know, gave approval for additional temporary com accommodation uh, pending the delivery of the major project, uh, and that included two mainstream classrooms and one special uh, education teaching space. Uh, but clearly the priority is now to get the permanent project underway uh, and uh, I can assure deputies that uh, the department will endeavour to have that uh, proceeded with as, as rapidly as possible. Of, of rapid than anybody else would because you can talk about the site being complex and requiring a careful master plan but the site hasn't changed it's been the same site that they've been on since you know like the school was opened in 1987 when Balbriggan had a population of 5,000 now it has a population of 22,000 we're the ones telling you minister that they need a permanent site and for us to be told now well it's complicated and we need to look at it it's really not good enough. It could be the case that after the storm this night that the school may not even be there and the inadequate situation that they're in, which is appalling anyway, mightn't even be there to deal with that. We need the plan yesterday and unfortunately I don't think your answers are adequate. So that answer isn't good enough, um, and D Deputy Daly is right. There, there is a really strong possibility, given the, the poor weather that's forecast, that uh, parts of the school may actually be unusable. I mean, th they're practically uninhabitable as it is. Um, and I don't think you have any words of comfort at all to give to the parents, other than you must wait to the parents, to the teachers, uh, to uh, the, the principal, Ms Costello. You have to wait. That's not good enough. They are, at the moment, in intolerable conditions and all that you have said is that those intolerable conditions are set to continue. Minister, there has to be some plan in place because we could be dealing with a very, very serious situation. 52% of the kids are in those prefabs. They're already uninhabitable. Like my colleagues, look, I'm genuinely disappointed with the with the response. You know, the technical assessment process. You're saying we'll we'll have it completed by the end of next week. I'm wondering, is that the answer that's given because this was raised here today? I think all of us, in like parking party politics and affiliations and all that aside. I don't know whether you visited the school, and if you haven't, I will invite you to come with us and look at the school. There are other schools in North Dublin that require attention. I would be hard pushed, maybe this and one other Hedgestown National School are the two schools that are in desperate condition. The response is completely inadequate. And I would really ask you to, to redouble your efforts, to go back to your officials and say, Do you know what, this needs to yeah, be done. I can understand, first of all, I can understand the Deputy's uh, concerns, but I, I, um, I think you know, the project brief is a very important phase in any construction project. Uh, the appointment of the design team, like there isn't a way of avoiding appointing a design team. Uh, there will have to be a design drawn up and a planning permission obtained, uh, and that has its own process to, to, to go through. Uh, the department will obviously have to be satisfied that the design achieves the, the objectives. We don't want to have any uh, second-rate uh, construction here, so this has to be done. Um, it, it involves, as I say, construction of 12 new classrooms, two uh, ASD units, as well as refurbishment of existing 
existing accommodation. So there, you know, this is a project that is now proceeding into the next stage. The department seeks to minimise the delay in all those stages, but subject to, um, to being robust in each of the processes. We don't always control issues such as site conditions, planning delays and so on. So while the department will seek to uh, push this project on as quickly as possible, I can't give timelines or dates. These processes, I think the deputies will understand, have to be completed. Um, so to say the answer is not adequate, uh, you know, this is the way we do every school project. We have to do it in a robust way, uh, but we will seek to uh, do each of those stages as rapidly as possible uh, in view of the acute concern that uh, all of the deputies have, uh, have expressed and, uh, uh, and as I know, um, the concern of parents and principals and staff alike.